Hi class, welcome to the first lesson in Unit 3, Atomic Structure. Today, we'll begin our exploration of how the structure of an atom has changed over time. As we begin, we will review the three major subatomic particles, how a change in a subatomic particle can create an atom or an ion, and how a change in subatomic particles can take can create isotopes. We'll begin by exploring the early models of the atom. The next two lessons will continue on and we'll explore the later models of the atom. Let's go. Make sure you're using your guided notes. Before we dive into the early models of the atom, it's important that we emphasize that this lesson and the next three lessons will focus on the big idea that the modern model of the atom evolved over a long period of time through the work of many scientists. We'll see that most of the scientists, the principles of an, what an atom is did not actually begin with science, but instead we credit the idea of the atom to the Greek philosopher Democritus. There is no science or experimentation behind his idea, but he thought that everything on Earth was made up of small, tiny particles, which he names atoms, like grains of sand. Later, we go on to believe that everything is made up of Earth, wind, fire, or water. This is an idea that prevailed in both Eastern and Western thought. But this is not science. Let's get started with the first scientist. The first scientist that used empirical or experimental evidence to describe what we now call our atoms was John Dalton. John Dalton did not do any experiments himself, but he did what many scientists do. He reviewed the work of his peers. When he reviewed the many experiments of many peers, he realized that four big ideas were going to be repeated throughout all of those different experiments. He came up with the Dalton model of the atom. His model is called the billiard ball model, and it consists of these four major big ideas. Dalton believed that all matter was made up of atoms, that all atoms of a given element were identical in both mass and properties. Compounds are formed by combining two or more atoms in a definite proportion. And atoms cannot be created or destroyed, but can be rearranged in chemical reactions. Here are several images that help us better visualize John Dalton's atomic theory. The first idea is that he believed that atoms were like hard spheres and different atoms of different elements appeared differently. So to the right, you'll see that there are three billiard balls. These three billiard balls would represent three different elements because they have different properties. In this case, the property is color. Now, if we take this to what we already have learned about how atoms combine to form compounds, we can see in the image in the upper left-hand corner that oxygen is a red sphere and is much larger in mass than hydrogen, the two gray spheres. Notice how when oxygen and hydrogen are combining to form with water, the elements themselves, the atoms, are not changing. This is an important idea that Dalton has, that matter is not created or destroyed in a chemical reaction, just simply rearranged. His idea can be seen in the example on the bottom left. On the bottom left, again, we have blue oxygen atoms and red hydrogen atoms. They are different in property, in this case color, and mass or size. Now, the last idea that we can see is comparing figure B to figure C. In figure B, we have water, whose formula is H2O. 
in figure C, we have hydrogen peroxide, whose formula is H2O2. Because these, although they have the same elements, they are combined in different proportions. They have a different formula, they'll have a different name, and different properties. Here is a review from lesson number seven, pure substances. Both water and hydrogen peroxide are compounds. Now, as we discussed earlier, compounds always have a definite ratio of elements. So water, which is really healthy for you, has the formula H2O, but hydrogen peroxide has the formula H2O2. So here we can see that a different proportion gives a different formula, a different name, and very different properties. There's this great chemistry joke that says, a man walks into a bar, he asks for H2O, he gets a cup of water. The man behind him asks for H2O2 and dies. Not every part of Dalton's atomic theory was correct. One of the things that Dalton said were atoms are indivisible, but we have already learned that atoms are made up of three major subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Another change we have made to Dalton's atomic theory is that it is no longer believed that atoms of the same element have exactly the same mass. We now know that isotopes exist. During the Big Bang, when all the atoms that exist on Earth were created, elements were created with different masses. The different masses are due to different numbers of neutrons. It is important that you are able to describe an isotope in terms of both subatomic particles and mass number. Isotopes are elements with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. This results in the same atomic number, the number in the bottom left of the symbol, but different mass numbers, the number in the top left of the isotopic symbol. Another way elements can differ is atoms can form ions. On our periodic table, the charge of ions is placed in the upper right-hand corner. If an element symbol is written and no charge is given, it is known to be an atom. Here we can see a small section of your periodic table. Notice the divided line is in bold that divides the metals from the nonmetals. You can see that most metals have positive oxidation states or positive ion charges. Metals tend to form positive ions called cations. They do this by losing negative electrons. When an atom loses electrons, it often loses a principal energy level or electron ring. Cations are smaller than the atoms. Anions, on the other hand, are negative ions. Anions form when atoms gain electrons. Anions are larger because they are gaining electrons. This gain and loss of electrons is exactly what describes the chemical reactivity of various elements. You might be wondering why elements react, and the answer is to alter their electron arrangement so that they can mimic the most stable electron arrangement of the noble gases found in group 18. The next scientist we are going to discuss is J.J. Thompson. Thompson used an apparatus called a cathode ray tube and was able to find the existence of an electron 
embedded in what he believed was a positive goo. Cathode ray tubes are a piece of equipment that is actually found in an old school tube television. The way in which this works is an electric current is passed through an evacuated tube. As Thompson passed this electric field through the tube, he noticed two things. One, he saw a bright light. And two, this beam of light always traveled toward the positive charged end of the tube. That made him believe that maybe there were negative particles inside this beam of light. This is because opposite charges attract. Thompson then placed magnets on the edge of his tube to induce an electric field, and he noticed that his beam of light always bent, but it always bent towards the positive field, meaning this beam of light must have some negative particles. Here is the model Thompson devised. It is called the plum pudding model. Thompson understood that most matter was made of atoms that were neutrally charged because atoms and most matter do not attract or repel one another. But this neutrally charged matter, he hypothesized to be made up of a positive goo like a pudding with negative chunks in it like plums. Plum pudding is very similar to chocolate chip bread pudding or chocolate chip cookie dough. So basically, Thompson was the first to discover any of the subatomic particles, in this case, the electron. That concludes lesson 21. We'll have more lessons on atomic structure to come. Until then, think like a proton and stay positive. See you in class. I'm adding a review of atomic structure to the end of this video. You can always go back and rewatch videos 6 and 7. Here is an example of all the information you can find about atoms and their structures on your reference table. Take a minute to pause the video and copy this information into your notes. The first most important number is here in bold. It is called the atomic number. The atomic number always equals the number of protons found in an atom's nucleus. Notice how the element symbol and the atomic number are bold because they are always correlated. Often we do not write the atomic number because it is so well understood. Carbon has an atomic number of 6. Oxygen has an atomic number of 8. And potassium has an atomic number of 19. We do not have to write its atomic number because we know that the symbol always corresponds with the same atomic number. The number of protons in an element is always constant. This is not true for the number of neutrons or electrons. The number of neutrons can be indicated by the atomic mass. The atomic mass would appear in the upper left hand corner of the symbol and it will always be a whole number, as you can only have one neutron and one proton each. There's no such thing as a fraction of a proton or a fraction of a neutron. On our reference table, this number, however, is a decimal. This is called the average atomic mass. It is the weighed average of all the naturally occurring versions or isotopes of an element. Notice that our atomic number which corresponds with our symbol tells us the number of protons. If the atomic mass is the sum of protons and neutrons, all you need to do is subtract the atomic number from the atomic mass to find the number of neutrons. The next important subatomic particle to talk about is the electron. The arrangement of electrons in an atom is displayed here in the electron configuration. The electrons are understood to be closer to the nucleus on the left and further from the nucleus on the right. 
the electrons that are closer to the nucleus have the least energy, and the further they are from the nucleus, the more energy they will have. The place in which they are found, the electron cloud, is actually termed an orbital, the likely location of finding an electron. Different orbitals have different amounts of energy, so these are called principal energy levels. Notice carbon has two principal energy levels. In the first principal energy level, with the lowest energy, carbon has two electrons. And in the second principal energy level, with more energy, carbon has four electrons. Carbon has a total of six electrons. In all atoms, there is a neutral charge because the positive protons will equal the total negative electrons. Now, many a times, atoms try to obtain more stable electron configurations by becoming ions. Ions result when atoms gain or lose electrons. Here are listed the possible charges of various ions. The charge of an ion is also called its oxidation state. When an ion has a negative charge, it gains negative electrons. When an ion has a positive charge, it loses negative electrons. The protons and neutrons in the nucleus do not change when atoms form ions. Because there are four protons, this is beryllium. The mass number is nine. The electron configuration is two dash two. This atom has no charge because the protons equal the electrons. So I'm looking at this orbital diagram and I'm gonna figure out what element it is. And since it has 12 protons, I know that the element is magnesium, since magnesium has an atomic number of 12. And I'm going to look at the protons and neutrons now, and those add up to 24. So I know that it's magnesium 24 with an atomic number of 12. Hi, I'm Ms. Shake. I'm going to do this problem with you. Okay. So this is an atom which has 16 protons. So if you see 16 protons, which is sulfur, and so I write S down because it's 16, and its atomic number is 16, which goes on the bottom. And then I figure out the atomic mass, which is 16 plus 16, 32, which goes on the top. and it's sulfur, and if you ever smelled sulfur, it's stinky. If you ever smelled your fart, it's stinky because of the sulfur that's in it. Right. Hi, I'm Mr. M. We're going to do this problem. Um, we're trying to figure out the isotope symbol of this atom. First thing you need to look at is the fact that there's 18 protons. Something with 18 protons has an atomic number of 18, so it must be argon. Argon. Atomic number of 18. Next, we could find the mass, which goes in the upper corner here. It's the sum of the protons and the neutrons. 18 and 22 is a total of 40, so there's a mass of 40. Next and last, I want to check the charge. I want to see how many electrons there are. There's two in the first ring, eight in the second ring, eight in the third ring. So two, eight, and eight is 18 Electrons, 18 protons, 18 electrons means no charge. Can you write the element symbol for this atom?